that have come out tonight to this open air service to preach the gospel that we're going to do. But before we do open the word of God tonight and read from it, we're going to ask God's blessing on our coming together. We'll pray. Our Father in heaven, we come before thee and thank thee for this day. We thank thee for the opportunity to be able to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ once again. And we do pray and ask thee that as the word of God is opened and is read from, that souls may understand their need before thee and that they may come and trust the Savior of sinners. Granted that souls may come to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and the word of God says thou shalt be saved. So we just thank thee for thy son, our Lord Jesus, and for the gospel and able to be here tonight to be able to preach once again on searchable riches of Christ that is found in thy well-beloved son. We just commend ourselves to thee then we do give thee thanks in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we're going to read a couple verses here tonight and we're going to look first of all into the book of Hebrews and Hebrews chapter 9 and verse number 27 and it says there, it says, and as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. And then in the gospel of Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 28, it says, and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8, it says, But God commanded his love toward us, that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. And we're going to read that golden verse that is found in the Bible, in John chapter 3, at verse number 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And my last verse that we're going to read from the Holy Scriptures is this, in Mark chapter 1, at verse number 15. It says, and say, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. There's four little points that i like to notice tonight that are per very personal. And not only very personal, but they are realities. Four things that God gives you. First of all, we're going to look at that God gives us a body. And as God gives us a body, it tells us in the Word of God that that body someday is going to die. But then there's a soul. God gives us a soul. And that soul it will never ever die. As long as God lives, the soul will live. But then there's something else that he gives us, and that is, he gives us his son. He gave us his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. But you know, there's something else that God gives you, and he gives me. And really what it is, is it is a choice. And that choice is this, that we may repent and to believe in Jesus Christ. So really what's, this is what is up on my mind. And as we do consider these things, 
There's lots of times that we as can stop we even in the busyness of our day and our life even at this very moment. And I like to tell you that God is interested in you. And this is the very God that we speak to you of tonight that made this universe, who has made this world, and who has made you and I. All things that are in it, God has made. And he is interested in you. And not only is he interested, but he cares for you. And not only does he care for you, but he loves you. And these things that we're going to look at is for you and for me. You know, people ask a lot of questions. And we said even last week, there's questions that people ask. And people do ask this question and say, who am I? And then there are those that says, well, where am I going? And a lot of people ask this question. It says, does God really love me? You know, a lot of people don't know the answers to these questions. And there are those that don't realize that these are questions that they, would, they need to have answered. But there are those that don't care. But there are those that listen to the gospel and they're so happy that they can hear the gospel and that they know and they find out that God loves them and they find out that the Son of God loves them and gave it himself for them. You know, God, tonight, as we enter into what we're going to speak on, you know, God doesn't make any uh, distinctions nor any difference. And we find that that it, it doesn't matter whether you are male or female. It doesn't matter what color you are or whatever nationality are you are or whatever religious association you may be with. But God puts each and every one of us on the same level. And he says these words in Romans chapter 3, at verse 23, he says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and there is no excuse for you and I. And that's the same thing what we believe tonight as we look at these four things. They're the same for you. They're the same for me. And God says that we have a body. It will die. We have a soul, and we'll, it will never ever die. And he gives us his son to die for us on the cross of Calvary that our sins may be forgiven. And he gives us a choice. And that choice God wants us to do is this, that we may repent of our sin and that we may trust the Lord Jesus Christ except the gospel. We come to our first little point tonight. We find that God gives us a body. And we don't have no problem with that because we know as we look at ourselves and we look at our hands and our face and we look at our feet and our, with our head, we know that we have a body. And God has given you a body. And that body someday is going to die. Because we read in the scriptures about a body. And we find there, and it says, The Lord God for man of the dust of the ground and breathe into man his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul you know there are people that are around us and probably even our own selves as we look at our own bodies and we start to complain we have a headache our bones ache and and, and whatever and we look at others and says, oh, you're so healthy. And I like to be like you. But the thing about it is this. There is a day coming that each and every one of us is going to die. Someone has said there are only two things in a man's life or a woman's life that will happen. 
And the first thing is that when they get old enough, then they're going to have to pay taxes. And then after that, there's the only other thing that they must do, and that is that they are going to die. We need to make a very plain tonight that we need to pay attention to the statement that God says, and in Genesis chapter 2, at verse 17, there's a verse that says, Thou shalt die. And then in 2 Kings, at chapter 20, at verse number 1, it says these words, Thou shalt die and not live. We have read into Hebrews chapter 9, and verse 27 says like this, It is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. This is an appointment that you and I have to keep. And as we think about this appointment, God in his word in Amos chapter 4, and it tells us that we need to make preparation because we're going to die. And in this life, we find that life is so precious, and so it is. Life is so so precious, but it is so brief. And you know when a person dies and goes in into eternity, you ever see anyone ever come back? Well, we haven't. Well, we know that there's the man in the glory that is that died and rose again from the dead. That's our Savior, the Lord Jesus. You know, in life, we only have one kick at the can, as it were. We only got one life. One life to live. We're going out into eternity. An appointment that we cannot cancel. We can't put it off. Because the Word of God plainly declares to us that we have to have business with the very God of heaven. We need to make preparation. And the reason why we need to make preparation, really, because man dieth. And it says, where is he? The question is asked, because we come to a soul, and God gives us a soul. And it says, it will, ne it will never die. The body will die. But the soul that is within you, will never, ever die. And we have read that verse, and we'll read it again. And it says, And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground. And he says these words, And breathed into him his nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. You have something that is within you, that is a soul, and that soul belongs to God, and your soul will live as long as God lives. You know, God tonight is eternal. He is everlasting to everlasting. And the Word of God very plainly puts that toward us. But he says these words in Matthew chapter 10. And the Lord Jesus himself says these words, And fear not them which kill the body, but are, but are not able to kill the soul. You know, man, today, they're going ahead and taking someone else's life. They can take the life, but they can't destroy the soul. But God says in his word, but he says, rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. We have a soul. Never forget that, that God says, says these words. Man dieth, and where is he? Doesn't say, where's his body? But it says, where is he? His soul. And you know, there's a story that is told about a man that was standing on the corner of a bus stop. And as he was standing there, there was, a, there was another man. And there was a woman 
on his other side that was standing there. And the one man, as he was just watching these people, the one man all of a sudden just dropped and he died. And the woman said, he's gone. And the man said these words. He said, where? Where is he? He's still there. But what it was, that his body was there, but his soul had made flight into an eternity. In Mark chapter 8 and verse 36, it tells us of something that is so important. For it says, for what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And the verse next to it says these words. And what shall a man give in exchange for their soul? Man is selling their soul for little or nothing. Some sell it for anything. But yet the soul will continue to live in heaven or in hell. That's why we preach the way that we are preaching. To warn you and to tell you that you have a body that is going to die. But you also have a soul that's never ever going to die. But I'd like to tell you tonight that God has given us his son. And his name is Jesus. And he gave us that he may die for your sin. He gave him for you. He gave him for me. And he, he gave us that we would not lose our soul. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 19. At verse number 10 it tells us the reason why the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world. It says these words, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. He didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And the reason why the Lord Jesus was given and God gave us His Son is because hell is a real place. Never ever think nor let anyone tell you any difference. God in his word says these words. Hell is real. It says hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at thy coming. Because we're going into eternity. And as we go out into eternity, it's our soul that goes out into eternity. And we need to be saved. We need to know what our sins are forgiven. We find there that the power of God is unto salvation. And God will save sinners like you and me. He gave us his son. And as he did give us his son. You know this is the most loveliest person that ever lived upon this earth. He came from heaven. He came and he, he lived upon this earth and he done all manner of good. But uh, between that, there was a cross that he bore and he bore the cross of Calvary. He let men take him and nail him to a cross and to lift him up before heaven and earth. And you know the Lord Jesus he could have stopped all this. But because he cares for you. And because he is interested in you. And because he loves you. He stayed upon the cross. And he stayed there. And he died. Bearing your sin. Becoming your substitute. Upon the cross of Calvary. So that that soul. Of yours would be in heaven. You know, God doesn't want anyone to be in a lost eternity. Well, why is it that there are so many that are in, in eternity and are lost? 
You know, the book of Revelation speaks to us of a place, eternal death. So many people, they're there. We can look into the Word of God. And in Luke chapter 16, it speaks to us of a man that is in a lost eternity. His soul is there. And God wants us to realize and to understand the truth of the gospel that Christ died for our sins and that he was buried and he rose again from the dead. He's alive tonight and he is in heaven and he wants people to come and to repent and to believe the gospel. But how does a person do that? We have been looking at, we have a body that's going to die. We have been looking at a soul that will never die. We have been looking at a son, his son, that died for us upon the cross, but then there's something else. And we're saying, how does a person repent and believe the gospel? Because God has given you a choice. You know, there is not one person that is in God's heaven tonight that is there by chance. They are there because of a choice that they have made in their life. Those that are in a lost eternity, they're not there because of circumstances or because of poor things or whatever. They're everyone is there that is lost, and they're lost because they chose to be lost. People have said there is a God, and he loves people, and we know that, and we're so glad that he does. He says there, people may say that God will never send a person to hell. He will never send one of his children to hell, and that is so true. Well, why are people there? It's because they have rejected the Lord Jesus. And I ask the question, have you ever repented of your sin? Have, when have you become a child of God? Have you trusted Jesus and his saving power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you saved tonight? If you're not saved, your soul, if you go out into eternity tonight, will be in a lost eternity. And it will be because of a choice that you have made. You know, back in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 27, there was a choice that was made by so many different people. Pilate made a choice. Pilate delivered the Lord Jesus to be crucified. There was the, the priest that were there. They made a choice. Away with him. And there were the people, the citizens of, of that world at that time. Empowered really by, by the priest. And because of what Pilate had done. Delivered them. They made a choice. And so many made the choice. And he said, away with him. Away with him. We will not add this man to reign over us. You know, people have made a choice. Same as like you make choices in your life. You make good choices. And you have to live by your circumstances by your choice and the circumstances that come and the consequences we have to take them if we make a bad choice we take the consequences if we make a good choice we take what it is and it is good and this is what the gospel is all about and it says it is a choice that you make for life and it is a choice that you make for eternity. You need to repent of your sin. And believe the gospel. 
and accept God's salvation. We look at a choice, and it is yours. And there's nobody that can make the choice for you. You have to choose. The choosing is all yours. And God gives you that choice. And he gives you the two choices to make. He don't leave you in the dark. He tells you from the word of God that there is one that you can choose and have life. Or you can not choose. And you do not have life. It's just as plain as, as that. And you can't be neutral. You can't say, well, I'm not going to make a choice. But even when you say, I can't, I wouldn't make a choice, you are making a choice. God says there's only two choices. He says, uh, those that are for me are those that received Christ, but those that are against me. They go into a lost eternity because they have not trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. It's either or. It's not, and it's one or the other. And he gives us a choice. So when we think of what we have been saying tonight, let me speak once again as we come to a close of this little meeting. You have a body, and it's going to die. You have a soul that God gives you. And that soul is never ever going to die. He gives us his son. And his name is Jesus. And he gave him to die for our sins. And tonight he is a risen, glorified, living Christ, one that is in the glory. One with his arms outstretched tonight. And he's saying, come. And he's saying, repent and Believe the gospel, and that is the choice. We've been looking at that, the choice. And God grant that tonight you may make the right choice, because it is for eternity. And when you go out into eternity, there's no reruns. We're not coming back. Wherever we are, we are. And some will be in heaven. Some will be in a lost eternity awaiting the final judgment of an holy and a righteous God, which is the lake of fire. Shall we pray? Our Father, we come before thee tonight and thank thee for this message that has been heard here for the gospel. We do thank thee for thy son once again. The greatest person that ever lived and ever died. And today he is in heaven and we're so glad that he is. Because he is the one that is willing and able to save all those that will call upon his name. Remember people that have listened and heard the gospel. We do pray for a blessing that they may be reached and saved and to be ready for the eternity that lies ahead of them. So we just commend ourselves to thee then as we do give thee thanks in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.